hello everyone so um, the goal of these videos the series is to get you started with if you want to contribute with google earth enterprise um, open source software in there so my goal is to enable you answer any questions or um, just make it easy for you so you don't feel overwhelmed so this is our github repository and i would put this, this link and post it on my um, description down below so you can clone it and then if you are new to git i would suggest use ssh so that's what i used that's a command and once you have git installed here and the instructions to do all that is are in the github but um, i will just show so this is the command i ran and i got my clone set up so i'm not going to run it here because i already did so so the building instruction how to build the code is are there as well so let's go over them so the way to find that is everything is in wiki I mean, most of the information is in wiki so the build instructions are there then uh, how to install is there so i'll go build instruction and for my purpose i only followed these instructions i did not do anything else and they are pretty straightforward but still if you are new to the system the linux environment or whatever whatever it is um I hope that these things would help you. So now the command I would show is the build command. So, so I did install git and all that I have for Ubuntu set up here. So then, yeah, all these packages are required. So all these are dependencies pretty much of the product and uh, here the important step is depending upon why you are building it so like for example you want to demo something or try first time you can do optimize um it this release is pretty much optimized core but it will not have much information um then internal is one uh, internal equals one is non-optimized code and uh, good for debugging so any time you need more information fixing the issue build, reporting the issue you have to i would prefer building it internal so this is the internal command uh, i mean build internal command looks like um sorry. So I have the script and I think that would be a good idea to go over my script and this is very basic thing, but this is uh, what I would do if it, the fusion is already started, I would stop that. I would stop the G server um, as well and uh, both these servers are stopped, then I would do an internal build and then I would go in the earth enterprise repo and uh, install the build binaries into my g install directory now by default it gets installed into temp but uh, if you want you can specify where you want it to be installed and then uh, from there once it is staged for install then the next step is the actual install for that you would go under src installer and there is a fusion installer so right now i'm only playing with fusion so i only install the fusion part so install fusion and then where to pick up the binaries from is this now there is a um so sometimes you would change the code and you would need to only update the binaries uh, that are changed or built and changed few minutes ago or whenever you did the last change so for that i use update so update pin would directly it should have shown it in the terminal but uh anyway so update pin you specify how many seconds or minutes uh you want it to be looking for so I do 60 minutes ago, so by default, which is one hour. And these scripts are checked in. So 
then you can tune in like today you build it and you don't have any time to deploy and test and tomorrow you come and increase the time to um, more than 24 hours and then deploy it that way. So what this script does is it only replaces the binary in opt Google bin and opt Google lib libraries and binaries. That's what it does. It does not do anything from scratch. It only will look for the timestamp and replace the binaries of Fusion and the server. So that part when you are doing the changes and only need optimum update. So now, I, now that I have set up, install, built and installed, now we will verify if my Fusion is running fine. So of course I could, in, I could invoke it, start it. And um, then I would be creating a fresh imagery resource, I guess. So always, always, I, I would suggest, oh, let's step back a little bit. So I would suggest in assets, this is your assets folder where all your uh, built resources, databases, and projects are kept. And anytime you want to clean it, like for example, you have wrong resources, old resources, anything you want to clean up the space, you don't have any delete in Fusion UI. So the way I do is I go in Gvol assets on the command line and then I literally delete what I don't want. So it's good to have a folder structure around what you're trying to do. So for example, demo imagery. And then um, depending on, on that, and you, it's not just the delete is not supported, even you cannot move, like for example, I have these. You cannot move from one folder to another. So let's do imagery demo. Um, yeah, so you know the how, why folders are important. So I would do the San Francisco 15 meter TIFF. And these images come from the um, tutorials that you would install if you want to as part of um, install steps. And they are explained as well. So this is basic imagery, uh, I mean, basic tutorial. So we would keep it. Yeah, sorry, I don't have, I'm missing some drivers. So that happens always, uh, at least since I built my machine. So demo imagery, and then I knew that 15 meter is what I'm going to save it as, and then just to build it. So let's see, the fusion is working fine. So it's in progress, it's working fine. Now we create an imagery, uh, probably we would do one more imagery, which would be a blue marble. So it's good, it's always good to have a globe, like an entire globe um, built into your project so that when you see in your client, you get not just that um, terrain or your imagery, but you get it projected on a globe or fused with the entire world. And that way the entire globe is interactive and useful uh, for your project and not just that part of, otherwise we miss not that part of the globe for which your imagery uh, resource is built. So I save it as, blue marble so yeah i was going to uh, say that otherwise if you don't have a globe full globe it pretty much defeats the purpose of having it interactive and if you are using google earth enterprise client then there is a lot of uh, a lot of use cases you would find very interesting use cases uh, the entire globe imageries can be used and uh, it's included it's old but it's included in the tutorial so you can get started with that so now i have a blue marble image which is a globe and then san francisco 15 meter resolution and while it's building what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a project uh, projects folder and then i would call it demo projects and say okay and then create a uh, project so these are vector resources this is imagery project um yeah so let's build our 
so don't worry while it's um so while it's building you can still include your resources in here and then i wouldn't see it select any fancy options here but i'll just go demo project flat imagery project and that works for me and then i would say design reference of globe as of globe it's my project build it close it it's waiting because probably this is blocked okay now let's see why it's blocked it's blocked and failed I did something wrong. No, okay, sorry. Um, our demo imagery was here and that is successful. Okay, but forget about what we saw. So demo imagery is successful, demo project is in progress. Now the next step is to build the demo databases. And remember what, why we are doing this is to just verify that our install is um, working. So let's build the imagery DB and then save it into demo databases. And I will see SF globe and save it and then build it and close it. So that's done. So all of these things can be done through command line as well. Once you get accustomed to what it is required to, to be done. So you can just copy these logs as scripts and follow the sequence and do it. So for example, here for the unified index generation happens on the tiles or whatever files it, uh, the pyramid files, then DB generation happens, then, um, next step is qt quadri generation so all these things can be automated using your command line preferences and so now that we have a database uh, let me start the server so the way to start i think i just kicked the fusion off but we can start it again so don't worry about all these logs. I have my log done on uh, from the past tutorial to a verbo setting, but um, I'm going to do G server start and it will start the server. I have it deployed as I said. And so the way to verify if my server is working fine is try to push a database. So by default, you would see that the local one is the one that is selected. Uh, sorry, these are the versions, but local one is the one where we will be pushing and it's successfully pushed. Now that because I have debug enabled, you will get all these uh, messages, like a debug message. And um, that's all. So uh, we have verified that the globe has actually published now what i can do is i can go in google earth line but okay before that what i want to do is um actually there is one step remaining and that is to push uh, sorry publish the database so where are we here we can publish the database here so http localhost admin google earth enterprise server ge apache user that's the default one you can change it in the configs and then gee admin is the apache login and i have uh, this one pushed now i'm going to publish it so we in the more advanced tutorials we can uh, go over what is a push and publish and search tabs and etc but uh, to, 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 to places publish maybe i could have gone for a better name so plugin is not loaded it's not supported we can go over that uh, some other time so i'm using google earth client and then server sign in and here i'm going to use the new one that i created 
It's called SF Glow version 1. Not a fancy name, but works for me for this tutorial actually. So let's see what we created here. So this is San Francisco. So this is the 15 meter resolution imagery. Remember this globe is very low resolution, but we, this is how we fuse them together or created a globe of two different imageries and projected as one. So that's the whole point of um, having your custom imagery, creating your globes, and then viewing them in Google Earth client. So that's the end of this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching.